Let me ask you this question. I, I, I want to switch topics just a little bit, General, because I know there'll be people that want to know your philosophy and your thinking on this question. So uh, there are clearly a and is a very tradition based school. We have a lot of awesome traditions and the Corps of Cadets is no exception to that. There's a lot of things about the Corps traditionally that we that we do that are fun or that, that honor different groups or people. Uh, but we have to we have to evolve and we have to change. I mean, a great example is my dad graduated in 65. That's when General Rudder uh, first started allowing women in the university. I mean, can you imagine if we did not evolve in that capacity? I mean, A&M would be, would be gone right now or it would be, be tiny schools. So we, we, have to, we have to evolve. We have to change with the times. But we also want, to the extent we can, to preserve kind of that fundamental core, C-O-R-E, core, uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, but experience, like the, the experience you get at. So how do you balance between uh, evolving and staying current with the times while also preserving kind of the, the fundamental core experience of being in the core of cadets? Yeah, and, and that's, that's the healthy balance that we, we look at every single year. Yeah. Um, you know, for those who lament the fact that it's different from when they were in the Corps, you know, I remind them, I graduated in 1979, and the world has changed dramatically since yeah. 1979. This is a different generation of young people than what we were back in 1979. And we have a responsibility for preparing young men and women for the world they're going to enter today when they graduate. If I try to prepare them to enter the world I entered in 1979, I'd be doing them a huge disservice. Huge disservice, yeah. Huge. You know, I've got to prepare them for the world they're going to enter today, which is very different from the world I entered in 1979. Sure. And so we have to adjust to the environment of today. And I think about, you know, back in my day, we didn't have computers, didn't have Wi-Fi, didn't right. have cell phones. And there were a lot of things that are available to cadets today that we never even dreamed of. Um, the world has changed. Right. Uh, complicate that even more by now we're living in a COVID-19 environment um, and it's complicated even more. We have to prepare cadets for that environment. However, Texas A&M is still Texas A&M University. The Corps of Cadets is still the Corps of Cadets. All the iconic traditions that we cherish the most at Texas A&M, silver taps, you know, Aggie Muster, the 12th Man, Reveille, Yell Leaders, all of those things that we cherish the most as being Aggies, um, they're still here. Yeah. We still hold on to those. Um, those traditions are still sacred to us, and we will never waver from those, ever. The Corps of Cadets is still the Corps of Cadets. And I'll give you a great example. We marched – we aren't allowed to march into Kyle field this year because of COVID-19 for football games. Right. So we said, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to do a march in on campus. We'll nice. march in through the campus. And when I told, when I put that out on social media, the feedback we got was incredible. Nice. People said, you know, thank God we still have the core doing what the core does. Yep. You know, and I talked to all the core leadership on Friday morning, last Friday morning. And I told them, I reminded them, you know, you represent far more than just yourself every single day that you're wearing that uniform. You represent all the Aggies that came to this great school that were either part of the Corps or saw the Corps on a daily basis. And for them, you represent all that's good about Texas A&M University. You yep. represent the traditions, the history, the legacy of what this great school is all about. And I can't tell you the number of people that have said, you know, amidst all the turmoil that we're seeing out there in the world today, when we see the core, we're reminded that everything's okay. <laughs> everything's okay yeah. because the core is still there at Texas A&M University. The band is still there at Texas A&M University. They're still marching in. They're still wearing their uniforms. They're still going to the football games. They're still performing at halftime. They see that and they say, things are okay at Texas A&M. Nice. Core is still there. And I remind the cadets, that's a big responsibility you carry in your shoulder. You carry 144 years of the core at Texas A&M University 
on your shoulders. You represent the very best of our university. You represent the traditions that we consider so sacred. You represent all of that every day that you wear that uniform. General, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm literally getting chills right now. You're, you're exactly right. And I'm going to speak directly right now to the cadets that are in the core right now. The general, what, what General Ramirez is saying could not be more accurate is 110% accurate. When I, when my friends and I go to a and of course we, we're not able to do it right now, but when we go back to football games and things like that, and, and we stand out there and we watch the core march in the amount of emotion uh, that goes through our body is kind of hard to describe. And when, when you hear when you hear the band, I mean, I still, 27 years after I graduated, get chills every single time I hear the band come out there. It, it, it's really, if you haven't experienced what it feels like, it's it's kind of hard to describe. But but you cadets right now, you, you General Ramirez is 100% right. You you carry a 144 year tradition that is still exceptionally important to tens of thousands of Aggies. It's, it's a big deal. And I, you know, it's, I, I told them the story about how when I was in the Aggie band, my senior year when I was on the bugle rank, and we were getting ready to step off, there'd be old Ags there watching us, parents <laughs> and old Ags on the quad as there always are. And I would, you know, we'd start playing the war hymn and I'd see Aggies with tears in their eyes. Yeah. Former students, you know, and who have heard that song hundreds, if not thousands of times, and they still get tears in there. I still get chill bumps, and I have heard that song more times than I can count. Yeah, and I would look at them as a cadet and say, I mean, <laughs> why are they crying? Well, yeah. now I get it because yeah. I'm the one with tears in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one that watches the core march by, and I've got tears in my eyes thinking, thank God we, that these young men and women are still willing to step up and join the core and be a part of what Texas A&M is all about. And listen, we are a much bigger organization now here at Texas A&M University. We've got a lot more students, you know, but the core is just the last remaining part of what Texas A&M once was when it started back in 1876 till now, 144 years. That's what the core represents. And sometimes it's hard for our cadets to understand that, but I try to remind them of how important it is that that they represent so much more than just themselves. And, and I, and, you know, I, also lags. I didn't, I didn't appreciate it when I was that age either general. I, you know, I, I, I certainly appreciate it now. You know, one of the things I, I like to tell kids when I'm talking to them about joining the Corps is, well, first of all, if, if it's a, if it's a male, I normally say, I don't think you're tough enough to join the Corps because I like to use a little reverse psychology, but, but anyway, the, the other thing I say is, I have uh, never met, and I'm sure there's people like this, but but I don't know any of them. I have never met a, a person, a cadet, who's gone through four years of the Corps and said they regretted it. I, I know people that have quit early uh, and said, I wish I wouldn't have done that, but I don't know anybody. And, and like I said, I'm sure there's a couple people like this, but 99.9999% of the people that complete the Corps look back on it and say, man, I sure am glad I did that. I think so. And I think uh, what's important to me too is the fact that uh, – you know, the friends you make, the yeah. relationships you forge in the, in the core cadets that are unlike anything else. I believe these are lifelong buddies. Um, you know, my, my class of 79 Aggie band buddies and I met last November in Fredericksburg for our 40th anniversary. Some of these guys I hadn't seen since we graduated. Right. And it was like a family reunion. You know, yeah. we get together and, and it's like, you know, time just stood still. And, and we were back in 1979 on the quad, you know, reliving those days of what it was like. I know you probably do the same with, with your outfit. For sure. That's, it, it's something special that you just can't measure. And, you know, for the core cadets, um, it's just, it's an experience that's like no other here at Texas A&M. And I'm not saying anything about any other uh, experience here at A&M. I'm just saying the core is like, no other, and it's one that is very, very special, and one that I'm glad we still have here at A and M. And and 